somebody asks you tomorrow, or how was church yesterday? Says you can say great. I sang in the choir. We did awesome, <laughs> and you did. So yesterday was one of those days. It was kind of an exciting day. A lot of go activity going on. Had a funeral here in the morning. Uh, Bud Bryant's had passed, and, and his family gathered. The chapel was full. It was a wonderful day. He's a wonderful man. It's great to be able to celebrate him. And then in the afternoon. We had uh, we stopped by and, and visited with uh, Maggie Benson, who graduated from University of Georgia this week. Congratulations! <laughs> I, I make it my point to embarrass at least one person a week. Did, did I did I, did I do that? Well, okay, okay, I embarrassed her. Congratulations! We are proud of you. And then last night we went to a, a celebration for Ronnie and Debbie Holtman's 50th anniversary. And they got married when, when she was 16 and he was 18. And I sat across from, from uh, Ronnie's mom last night and, and uh, Ruth, and I said, uh, so how did you take it when they came and said uh, you were getting, they were getting married at 16 and 18? She goes, oh, John and I got married at 16 and 18 too, so there wasn't much I could say. So that, I didn't know things like that you know, were passed down in the family by a, the 16 and 18 thing, but our congratulations I think it's, it's coming up. But 50, around here, I said, it's really tough around here because Linda and I are getting close to 40 years. And 50, 40, I mean, you, you, everybody can say, we're, how long have you been married? 40 years. Eh, that's not, that, you know, we've been married more than that. Then 50, you know, even those, those folks will say, uh, yeah, how, how long have you been married? Oh, eh, 50 years. Eh, that's just not, we've been married. How many people in here um, have been married more than 50 years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, quite, quite a few of you. That's it. Congratulations to all of you. So all that, just to say this, this last part of this story that I wanted to share. On the way back home, it was kind of raining. It was getting close to dark. It was 7.30, quarter to 8. And I see a sort of a, a faint rainbow going across the sky. And we thought, oh, okay, not much to that one. And we went around the corner, and there were these double rainbows that started from all the way to the ground. And you could just see them across the sky. I'll go as bright as could be all the way to the very end. You, all, you don't often get to see rainbows that, that, you know, that full and double rainbows. It was wonderful. But it reminds me, especially when we're singing this morning, of God's faithfulness, his promises to be with us as he did in, in the biblical times, early Old Testament, after the flood, and that, that he promised to be with and, and, and to encourage the people of Israel. And his promise continues today. And it's the day when we celebrate, uh, the, again, the birth of the church, the giving of the Holy Spirit. He reminded the disciples that he would not leave them alone, but that he would send his spirit in to, uh, to, to grow them, encourage them, and nurture them. So we hear part of that story this morning. And in, in Acts chapter 2, Pentecost was, was originally a Jewish festival. Uh, they called it Jewish Festival of Weeks or, or the Harvest. And it was uh, just the thankfulness to God for all his bounty and all the things that he had provided. But it was also a time where they celebrated uh, at 50 days past Passover that when uh, in, in the, 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 their, their calendar, liturgical calendar, that uh, Moses, uh, when he received, it was symbolic of him receiving uh, the law, the tablets. And uh, so that was, that was Pentecost prior to the Pentecost that we get to know today as the church. It's something that God was already in place to gather people together. That's why people had, the Jewish people had to gather and come together and worship back then from all over the place. And uh, they came to celebrate their Pentecost, and then they received our Pentecost. So let's hear the scripture, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, and 42 through 47. When the day of Pentecost came... They were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, and everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed in the, by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. 
They, all, they sold property and possessions to give to one, anyone in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Friends, these are God's good words. May he add his blessings upon them. Last week's sermon entitled was Lacking Wisdom. Where do we go for lacking wisdom? And James tells us, if any of you are lacking wisdom, seek God, ask him, and he'll freely give it to you because God wants to give us wisdom. He doesn't want to withhold it. And one of the things I think sometimes we just, we try to do too much on our own and we don't seek that wisdom and we fail to ask. It's a reminder to me. I've been trying to pray for more wisdom in these days and times and uh, hopefully God is, is answering those prayers. Today we're going to look at where do we turn when we feel like we're lacking strength or power. The world seems to be overwhelming or we're going through things in our lives and we feel like I, I just can't do it. I can't do it on my own and I don't have the strength to get through whatever it is you're going through. In the 23rd Psalm, it, it, talks, talks, it, it says, Lo, though I walk through the valley of shadow death. And it, in another translation it says, Even though I walk through and you think about whatever that walk through you're walking through right now, and we are reminded, even though you walk through that dark time, whatever you're going through, even though you're going through difficulties, God promises to help get us through it. Just like with the rainbow and just seeing Jesus and the Holy Spirit, all those together today we, we're trying to remember. And so we want to not only look to God for, for wisdom, but to remember, we don't have to go through things, either as individuals or a church. The church, sometimes we get, we get into doing all these things that we're doing, and we need to be called back to prayer, to a reminder that each and every day that our source of strength and guidance comes not on our own wisdom and our own intelligence. Those are good things, but that we need to learn and to seek God's uh, intelligence. I started as my mind wanders. I, I'm, I've never been actually uh, diagnosed with uh, ADD, ADHD, one of those things, but I, I'm pretty certain I have something at times. It just it comes around sermon preparation as much as anything. But I was thinking about the strength and what does strength resemble and re remember what things do I remember and think about when I think about strength. And the first thing I said, I closed my eyes and said, all right, what, what do I think about when I think about strength? first person that came to mind, younger people probably won't remember, or you'll look at this and go, I know who you're talking about, and that guy is really, really old, and that is Arnold Schwarzenegger. When I was growing up, Arnold Schwarzenegger, no, that's not him, but we'll get to that one in just a second. That was close. You, you, you can leave that one up, but that, that's the guy before Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, that's Charles Atlas, and boy, he, he had strength. Look at that bathing suit he's got on or whatever he's wearing he was something else and I was a little kid and and I remember obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the things that he did Conan and all these different things and then but I remember uh, this advertisement and it came back to me uh, let me prove I can make you a new man and I was really excited about becoming a new man because I was about 12 years old and um, so it started off at the beach and they had this this fellow with his his girlfriend and they were big muscular guy walked by and uh, the little skinny you can see the second frame and and he's a he's like a 99 pound weakling he's just very skinny or whatever and the guy kicks sand in his face and embarrasses him and Charles Atlas has a proven program to help him look like that and all you had to do was just send it in I think it was free but you had to probably pay postage or something which was probably like 1995 or something like that I don't know you can take that down they're gonna be looking at that all day if I leave it up here all the ladies are going man why didn't you get that program when you were growing up and and I get I'm so mad at my mom because I want it it's free mom I get this I'll do the exercises I'll look like Charles Atlas and she never she didn't let me and that's the reason I look like this, yeah. That's the reason I never got to be that muscle, muscle man. And uh, so today we, uh, we, we look at um, maybe all of us who feel like, you know, I'm not going to make that Atlas character. But in many ways, I don't feel like I have very much spiritual or, or the kind of strength that I need. What can I do? Is it too late? And the answer is no, it's never too late for us as believers in Christ as the church of God. Sometimes people look at 
uh, one of the questions that, that pastors are terrible about asking each other when we meet each other, how big is your church? A- and we often start answering it by, well, what our budget is. Or maybe how many people come on Sunday. Or how many new members we had. And we have these numerical indicators of how big is our church. And the truth is that, that God uses many, many small churches in our country and throughout the world. There are many, for, for uh, if, if you see the big mega churches around here, they're just a really small part of the body of Christ. They just happen to be really visible. They're the atlas, the physical atlas of the church. But there are other churches like ours who just do remarkable things. As I point over to the food pantry people again, the people that go out and feed, the, feed our neighbors and, and are, are out. Craig comes into my office on a regular basis and says, you're not going to believe what God's done again. And, and the people who called me out of the blue to provide food for us or money for us to reach more people and more people the people who are going to Kenya and doing all the wonderful things there, or the ladies and, and, and the folks that gather on Thursdays and they, they sew all these little things and send them out to, to, to different groups in, in nursing homes or hospitals, and yet they change their lives. They're little things, but they do great work with them. And we can go on and on, uh, just the, the kinds of things that happen through churches that are our size. We are a very strong church, but maybe not in numerically as some churches would indicate. But if we stop and, and think about it, all the things that God does, and it's remarkable and what a blessing we are to be a part of that. And the th- same thing in our lives when we begin to, to find ourselves feeling weak or, or maybe not able to get through something. That very first verse, one of the first verses I learned as a young Christian, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Not just the physical strength, but I can do, I can get through all of those things that God has for me to get through. And I'm reminded I don't have to go through it by myself, but I have have someone who is with me to encourage me, to give me the strength to get through. And I've heard many of you throughout the years that have said, I don't know how I would have gotten through this without God's help. I don't know how I would have gotten through this, whatever it was, without God's people. I don't know how I would have gotten through this without the word of God to encourage me. I don't know how I would have gotten through this, whatever it is, without prayer. And over and over again, you have been witnesses to the faithfulness of God in Scripture as I've seen you walk through uh, many of those dark valleys, and I appreciate that very much. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. The Bible says that we have that very same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in us think about that it's there it's available but so many of us we never we never access it we never really seek the power that is uh, that is given to us and it's still a mystery to me exactly what that looks like because i hear these words from pentecost today and i think well i don't know that i'm that strong i don't know that we're that 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 strong physically but maybe spiritually The promise from God is that that same power not only lives here in this church, but lives in us. Today we celebrate Pentecost. And again, 50 days after the resurrection, when Jesus was risen from the dead, on that day when everybody was celebrating another holiday, another festival, the Holy Spirit came down and shook them up. I'm going to read that again this morning. We don't have many days where the Spirit shows up like this, but boy, did the Holy Spirit show up that day. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And I thought about this and the importance of, uh, again, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of the church. I think we need to be together, that we're, we are individuals who accept and believe in Christ. But, but think about the people who, who maybe in that day, they had the sniffles that day. Uh, and they were home, and they couldn't make it, what they missed out on. And we never know what God's going to do in the church, but it's important when we can, as much as we can, to be together, to worship and praise and hear his word, and to see what God might want to do. When they came together in one place, suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind from heaven filled the whole house they were sitting. 
They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. I, I really can't even imagine what that would really be like in our world today if I'm looking at it, you, and all of a sudden I start seeing little, or you start seeing little tongues of fire over everybody. I think I would die. Julie, could you get the defibrillator and, and uh, you know, check me out because I, I think I'm having an episode right now. Uh, or if you started telling someone that you saw, saw this, that, that people might be a little shocked and wonder what was going on. But it seemed like it, it rested on each of them. Sometimes we sense that, I think. Somebody speaking or, or talking, and maybe it's a moment where we go, oh, this just feels like God is here and or the group is singing, and, and, and as I was, we are singing holy, holy, holy this morning, I just, I just, together, I just felt like God's Spirit was moving in our midst. And, and, and then all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What is most likely to have happened is that there were people from all sort, sorts of different regions who spoke in different dialects and different languages. They were Jewish, but Jewish from different areas. And, and some of them, they were waiting for Google Translator, and it wasn't quite ready. And so as they sat there, people started speaking. And say David was, was speaking in, 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 in French. Um, and, and, and I started speaking in my Virginian dialect, and everybody else may have seen, but he heard me in French. And someone else was speaking in another language, and the people were listening, and, and they had an automatic translation because of the Holy Spirit. It's not thought to that be that they were just gibberishing. It was a purpose for what God was doing in that moment. And you go down a little bit more, and at first I thought about this. I said, you know, forgive me, Lord, when those times are. I, I'm, I've become a really good Presbyterian over the years. We have a book of order that tells us how to do everything decently and in order. I like it. By gosh, it, it ought to be done a certain A, B, C, D way. We've had bulletins over the years, and, and we may not have a bulletin, but we have a, a very clear service order in our, in our worship service. It's almost the same every week. And if I forget something or move something, I, I, I not, not only do I know it, but somebody else will let me know it before I get home. You know, Pastor, you forgot. You put it in the wrong place. And, and in this time, it, it was Scripture. It reminded me that God doesn't always, maybe he would prefer not to, work in such an orderly, systematic way. It, it, and, and God was providing, uh, as I've, I've used the word in the past, holy chaos. And sometimes when things don't go the way that they should, that's okay. I like it as much as possible, but, but sometimes maybe when something's not going right, you go, okay, like this morning, as I mentioned, I, I come in and sometimes everything works smoothly, not a lot, but there's just some days where I've had a lot going on yesterday and things kind of, I get a lot of stops and conversations and things are going, what about this, where do we do that, where do we move this, how do we, and, and after a while it's just like, and it reminds me, God, I'm not even in control of the worship service at this church on a Sunday morning, and that's okay. But God wants to move, and he wants to, he wants to remind me to rely on him in these moments, in, these, in this day to day. And, and I think that the Spirit of God moving is something that we need to be open and available to, to think that God might work in ways other than what we might think with our own intelligence. Somehow, the spirit moving began to move them out of a selfish attitude and, and move them towards uh, these, these disciples that were following Jesus just before Jesus' death. Their mother was asking, two of them were asking James and John if they could be the ones who sat on the right and sat on the left and be in a place of importance. And we see here now in this, this, this text that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, breaking of bread into prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs provided by the, the apostles. They had everything in common. They, they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who, who was in need. 
And I've seen in this church over and over again, if there's a need, how people try to meet it if they can. And sometimes people are willing to give up things and to be sacrificial in doing so and how they, how they reach out to people in Kenya and all the things that are going there. And that's an, an indicator, I believe, of a healthy church. A group of people that kind of like hanging out together, who like to, uh, to pray and spend time together, but are willing to sacrifice their time, their energy, their financial resources for the betterment of the church and the betterment of the people. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts, and praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. When I think about the power, if we're lacking power, what do we seek? Both individually and as a church, uh, the, one, of the, one of the powers, I think, that comes when the Holy Spirit rests on a church and its people the power of being willing or, or the, the power to be forgiven. That God has come in Jesus Christ that we may have things in our life that we've struggled with and we keep failing with and we felt terrible about. It's not about being the best Christian in the room. It's about being a person who's willing to let God forgive us. And I think when we're willing to let God forgive us, hopefully we're maybe a little bit more inclined to forgive someone else and to help someone else find that. There's nothing more wonderful, in my opinion, than to be set free from that sense of guilt and shame that when God forgives you or forgives me, that sense of, man, God loves me anyway, even though. We find in the, in, in the Holy Spirit moving in our midst the power of purpose, that we're not just about building a building and having programs and all those things, but our purpose, Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. And God is always calling us to share, to continue to share good news, that we have a purpose in our individual lives, but also as a church. We are called to be a sent people, people who have been sent. Jesus says in John chapter 20, 21, he says, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. And how was Jesus sent? To come and to serve and to sacrifice his life for others. How could we assume that we're to do anything else? The question this morning is, uh, how do we, as a church, how do we seek the power that God has for us? I'm going to ask you to think about that some this week. I love every once in a while. I know, it's, uh, I know it's time for everybody to get out of school, but I love giving homework every once in a while. So I've got some summer, summer school work for you. Stop and reflect a while. How will we seek the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit? asking him to work in us and through us and to not be satisfied with simply going through the motions and doing what we've always done. This is a time in the life of our church where we're dreaming and we're praying and we're hoping. Hopefully we're not fearing. We're looking forward to seeing what and with through whom God will do great things um, but, but don't just pl pray for the next pastor. Pray for yourself that when you come, you will be a great advocate for the next pastor. Don't expect one person to come and make everything um, that you haven't liked about me or the church or any of those things all, all of a sudden become wonderfully, go smoothly. Sometimes God brings chaos. Don't pray that God doesn't bring chaos. Pray that you find the power in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit moving in and through the chaos. That you'll find the, the, the peace in the midst of the chaos. And that you'll find Christ who will grow you. This is a great time for this church to start new steps, to move in new directions, to not just do what we've always done. I'm sure you'll hear this from me again before I'm gone. But don't let the pastor hear each and every week, but we've, we've always, you know what I'm going to say? 
we've always done it this way. We've always done it this way. Is that what God wants? I'm glad did it, God did it a different way. At Pentecost and the Holy Spirit and the movement, maybe it wasn't something they expected or were looking for. But thank him he did because the church was born and it changed the world. And whatever you're going through, if you're, if you're lacking wisdom or strength today, I want to ask you to ask him for it. I want us to continue to ask for it, especially as we take this next 40 days and pray. And let that just be a, a, a springboard for many more day, days of prayer. Let's just think about what it might, must have been like that day, the Holy Spirit moving and touching people and changing lives. It's really what God wants the church to continue to do today. And I believe he can. And if we're willing, I believe he will. Let us pray. God, thank you for the reminder on this day as we celebrate Pentecost that it's not just about Moses receiving a bunch of rules and order and power, personal power, but God, you, you came and you sent the Holy Spirit to remind us of the resurrection and, and then the, 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 the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out on your people, now living in us. Help us to become aware and to hear your spirit speaking to us through your word, through our lives, through our hearts. And help us to be willing, even on those days when we don't feel like moving upon those leadings, to do your will, to serve others and glorify you. In Jesus' name. I, this morning, kept hearing Bryant say the word rest over and over again. Um, and I'm a visual person. If y'all haven't noticed that about me, I like to use visual representations of things. And I always think of the Holy Spirit as like the weighted blanket of the Holy Trinity. They come, if you're needing some rest and you need to like be told to sit still and take care of yourself, the Holy Spirit comes and just holds you down a little bit and you can't move. And in college, we used to sing the song we sang last week, um, He Watches Over Israel, and we used to make fun of it because we called it the Slumber Snot song, because it goes, He slumbers not or sleep. But we sang that over and over again. He slumbers not nor sleeps, so that you can, so you get a chance to rest. The Holy Spirit will not stop. He will not rest. He will not slumber. He will not sleep but you get to, and you get to restore your power, and you get to restore your strength. And I think that's just such a blessing that we sometimes take for granted. So let's, we're singing Rest On Us again today. And hopefully, I think we have the words up this time. I think it's going to work. Third time's the charm. Um, but as we sing this today, I just want you to take that moment of that weighted blanket of the Holy Spirit. Just feel it come rest on you and let it take over your body and take over your spirit and sit with you um, and just fill you and travel with you throughout the week. So if you want to stand and sing with us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us as the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. 
As I mentioned, we, we uh, came and celebrated Bud Bryan's home coming and uh, went to be with the Lord this week. So uh, pray for the Bryan's family. It's a, it's a, as you can imagine, it's a difficult time for them, but uh, they're people of faith, and we, we pray that God will give them comfort. I want to pray for Drew Durham, Jimmy and Carolyn Durham's son, who is in ICU in the hospital. Uh, pray that he will recover fully. And I uh, want to pray for Jane Marshall, who's in hospice at Tranquility, over uh, down near the hospital. And um, probably just a matter of hours or a couple of days. So pray for Vic and, uh, and Jane uh, Marshall. Uh, God will comfort them in these difficult days. And uh, Janine Evans, you mentioned that her grandson, four years old, um, had a, had, uh, was taken yesterday uh, to the hospital, there was an emergency, and so uh, pray for for DJ. Pray for DJ, and and uh, and that he recovers fully, and he's doing well soon. And um, we just uh, there's I know there are many others going things going on with you, and we lift all of you up in our prayers as well. Let's go before God for a moment of of quiet and moment of prayer. God, we thank you and praise you that you are with us. The promise of the rainbow is the promise of Scripture, the Holy Spirit, that you are here moving in us and through us. We access your power through prayer and, and, and through obedience. Lord, help us to receive and to follow your word. Pray for all those mentioned this morning. Bring comfort. We, we pray for all of those who are uh, sick. May they find healing. All those who are graduate, gra graduating, and moving on to the next stages of life, may they celebrate and things go well with them. And may they serve you wherever they go and whatever you've called them to do. Help them to remember they're, they're servants of God as well. God, as we come now, we take a moment to, to just rest in your presence and to give you thanks for as you come. still seems to be going through so, so much these days and the, the media seems to enjoy sharing all the bad news help us to seek and find good news to share it as much as with as much enthusiasm as we can to make a difference in the world and love the world around us help us to seek your will today and always and we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray saying our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Remember this morning on the way out, we've got offering plates. I believe they're on both tables back there. You have the opportunity to do that. And if you'd like one of those little, uh, little, the little vessels with the, the, uh, the mustard seeds, please take one as a reminder that you, you can hold and visualize and think about the, the faith that God places in us. Even if it's faith of the mustard seed, that we can move mountains and, and wonderful things can happen. Thank you for your continued and faithful giving to the church. And especially as we head into summer months, it, it just be reminded if you're on the way traveling, going to be gone for a little while, um, it, just remember your, your, the church goes on. We will be here doing his work. Again, just a reminder, the Vacation Bible School workers will be over getting some training over in the fellowship hall. If you're interested in finding out more about the search committee process and what's going on, update, go over to the chapel. Uh, they'll have the prayer, little prayer things on the way back, and look for the prayer 
information. Um, okay, it's Google. All right, there we go. I like it. Diving into a friendship with God. That sounds like a good thing to do. So may God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you today and always. God bless you. Go in peace. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come rest on.